Okay, sorry. Hey YouTube, it's so Elaine again. I know I don't um, record anything for months and months and months and then I come on here and I um, it's like a barrage of Cecilia Lane videos <laughs> um, but I wanted to go ahead and do a body shot so I have my swimsuit on um, go ahead and do a body shot for y'all and then there were um, like two or three things uh, last things that I wanted to touch on so first I know this is always uh, one that we want to see I'm always curious um, so let's do a body shot here okay so this is my little dress I have on cute anyways and then I have yes I have a bikini on so to get a full view All right, so this is me now. This is my stomach. Um, definitely, you know, needs work. Um, like this stuff. And and this, my pooch. I um, mean, you see my fat roll? I still have that. Yeah, I'm waiting for that last one to go. Um, I had more of them, obviously. But this is the, the last one that I need to get rid of. So I'm gonna try and try and hopefully get rid of that within the next ten pounds or something like that. Um, but so and there's me from behind. I can't see, but y'all can see on the side and front again. So. Um, I'm happy with how I look. Man, I have to figure out how to load pictures of um, of myself because I took pictures of myself right before my surgery in this bikini. <sighs> and oh my goodness, so frightening, so frightening. I can't even begin to say. Um, so I will figure out how to, to uh, load like the picture thing and to do like this um, picture show or whatever in the movie. Um, so that I can show some of those pictures. Um, that was pretty much the only pictures I took of myself at my highest weight because I hated the way I looked. <laughs> um, but of course I wanted to have this, uh, the ability to look back and see, you know, the difference. Um, so real big deal. So two last things that I wanted to talk about really quickly are um, the bad things about the surgery. So, um, here are my negatives. When, one of the worst ones is that um, I can top off in my eating, which means that um, they call it PBing, I could productive burp and literally, you know, throw up accidentally. Um, or if I just eat too much or I eat too fast, it like all stays, sits right here, and I end up having to go to the bathroom to throw it up. Um, I can choose to throw it up in one of two ways. I can throw up, you know, like people normally do, or um, honestly, just leaning over like that will cause, it's very weird to describe it. I gotta tell you, it's like pooping, but out of this end because it's that same like muscular feeling where mm, the muscles in my throat are working the food back down and then out so I can throw up like that so I'm not throwing up from my stomach I'm throwing up from my esophagus um, I'm working that food back out so I could do those one or two ways um, and um, that's not fun um, although now I, I guess hate to say that but I'm kind of used to it it's not that it happens all the times but if I'm in situations where I'm eating foods that I'm not really familiar with that are new that aren't the normal textures you know that I um, stick to because I know those textures go down well um, then I can run into trouble like I went on a cruise with my husband and it was all these foods that I normally don't eat and so I did have a lot of trouble on the cruise and a lot of stuff came back up um, and just wouldn't go down so um, <clears throat> so that does happen sometimes 
Um, uh, second thing is that going out to eat. Um, well, I'm still fat right now. So nobody would expect me to eat like this much when I go out to eat. And the thing is too, when you go out to eat, you're eating foods again, that are not what you normally prepare at home. And it's weird. I tend to prepare things at home that, that go down nicely, you know, things that have, um, you know, that are very moist and have a really good texture, aren't overcooked, don't have a lot of dry stuff. Um, and that's the only way I could describe it, dry stuff. Because <laughs> dry stuff does not go down well. Um, and if the meat is overcooked and dry, it's not going to go down well. <clears throat> so when you go to restaurants, you eat all this different kind of food that you don't normally eat. And, um, and as a result, um, I can't get as much in. The other thing is, it takes me a long time to eat. So like when I come home, um, I'll grab my dinner and don't tell anybody I said this, sit down in front of the TV and watch one of my favorite shows. And it takes me the whole show. It takes me a whole hour to eat my dinner. Um, obviously when you go out to restaurants, everybody else is eating in like 15, 20 minutes. Well, I can't eat that fast. Um, I have to take breaks in between and obviously after about 15, 20 minutes, people are done taking breaks. They're, they're done. They're ready to be, you know, getting up and leaving or, um, or on to the next course or whatever. Um, that's just how it is in restaurants usually, um, unless you're doing like that romantic date night type thing. So, um, I'm not finished or, you know, it's break time for me to give that food that's in there a chance to go down before I go putting more food on it. So I tend to either I end up ordering kids meals and I have a daughter and she gets the regular meal and they always get confused. Um, and they look at me like I'm crazy or, um, or I get a regular meal or an appetizer and I eat like this much out of it and they think I'm crazy. They think I don't like the food. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm getting tired of hearing that. <clears throat> People say, oh, you didn't like it? Is something wrong? <coughs> and I, you know, I have to say, oh, no, no, it was delicious. You know, I'm just, I'm just taking a little break or I'm full or whatever um, because I look retarded because I'm still so fat. And yet, um, I eat like I'm some super skinny mini. So I'm hoping that maybe as I get closer to my goal weight, which I'm only about 18 pounds away right now. My goal was only to be 160. <coughs> um, people won't look at me so strangely when I eat smaller portions and I go out to the restaurant because it is embarrassing. You feel like you have to explain to people, which is stupid. Why do I have to explain to you? But um, you do feel like that. It's just a, a weird, uncomfortable position. And um, I think that's one of the downsides. You know, you can't, you can't make yourself look like you're eating normally. Um, and so when you go out and, um, you know, uh, social situations, you can end up looking a little strange. Um, so I don't like that. Um, the last thing that I want to caution people is <clears throat> um, be careful. There are ways around our surgery. Um, I've seen people, um, I've heard of people who eat all day long. They just graze all day long, just a little bit all day long. And yes, you can gain weight like that. Um, I've even had to be careful of that at times. You can drink while you eat. I don't know how people do it though because it's very uncomfortable to me. Um, but you know, everybody's different and if you do drink while you eat, it's very common that the food can be washed down so that you end up eating more than you would had you not been drinking. Um, and if you're not sensitive to sugars uh, and fats and things like that, well then you could consume a lot of calories that way. Um, here's the thing, I eat pizza, you know, I eat 
I don't eat burgers, but I eat fried chicken. Um, I eat onion rings. But let me tell you what, um, and I think this is why it doesn't affect me. When when I when my husband brings home Popeyes, and I have some fried chicken, I get a wing, and I get three onion rings, and I get some red beans and rice, like a little ramekin, one of those little ramekins of red beans and rice. I will eat the drumette part of the wing, not the wingy part, because I can't fit it in. I will eat two of the onion rings, <laughs> and I will eat the ramekin of red beans and rice. When my husband orders pizza, I eat one slice of the smallest slice of pizza that's like in there. So a, a slice, you know, like that. Um, and that's all I can fit in and I don't eat any more. Now granted, if I waited a little while, I could go back and eat another slice. I could. And that's that grazing thing that you do not want to get into. That's very dangerous. Um, so... Um, you definitely want to steer away from that. But, you know, if I eat one slice of pizza, if I eat a little bit of Popeye's chicken, and then the other days, you know, I'm eating salad, I'm eating my proteins, I'm eating fish, I'm eating chicken, um, <clears throat> I'm focusing on the proteins and I'm drinking and taking my vitamin, it all balances out. So one day I may be, because of the Popeye's chicken or whatever else I ate that day, I may be up at 2,000 calories. And then the next day I'm at like 800 calories because I'm eating you know, the better foods, I'm focusing on, you know, eating my proteins, eating some, getting some vegetables in, um, drinking my water. And because of that, because those are low calorie, lower calorie foods, I only make it to about 800 calories because my portions are the same no matter what kind of food I'm eating. But if it's a higher calorie content food, I could get up to like 2000. If it's lower calorie, I could get as low as like 800, maybe even like 600 in a day. Um, and so for my body, you know, it's like always mixing it up um, because I'm not on a diet. So I'm not consistently trying to hit a target of um, calories or anything like that. So my body never gets a chance to get used to anything. It never knows what's coming. Um, today could be an 800 calorie today. Today could be a 1500 calorie day. Today could be a 2000 calorie day. Um, I could get sick like I have and now, if I get sick and be as a result, I don't feel like eating, I could end up with two, three hundred calories. I'm not saying, please do not take it that I'm saying that we should be eating two, three hundred calories. Definitely not. Um, I guess what I'm just trying to say is because I'm not focused on dieting and having this, you know, certain calorie amount every day and this, that, whatever, my, I am naturally mixing up my calories and my nutrients to keep my body guessing to keep my metabolism going and I am dropping weight like crazy um, I drop weight faster now it seems than I did when I was heavier uh, which is super crazy so um, and I think one of the real benefits where are my 13 minutes look I did it again <laughs> I think one of the real benefits of the surgery is that <clears throat> and I'm not gonna say this is for everybody um, you know, everybody's different. They've had different problems. They've done different damage to their bodies. Uh, most of us have had some, you know, issues or problems in the past. And let me just say, I seriously suggest that you address your issues before you embark on this weight loss journey. Because like I said before, you are still the same person. It does not change. Um, so please address those things because you can create worse problems um, after the surgery. And the surgery can enable you um, to, you know, have these problems. So please address your issues. Yes, I had many issues. I was molested. I suffered from anorexia. Um, uh, I had... Uh, body dysmorphia, all those kind of things. And I have had counseling many, 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 many hours of counseling, suffer from severe depression, panic attacks, all that. And I have done hours upon hours of counseling and treatment to address those issues, to um, confront my molester, um, to, you know, uh, take away that dirty secret. You know, it, it you have to address those things because when the weight starts coming off, let me tell you another negative is now I cannot hide. So please take care of those things. Um.